And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for another random champion casual Friday. One of my favorite days of the week. This is where we're going to uh, build four decks based around two champion um, pairings. You know, we're going to put two champions together, but we don't know what the, who those champions are going to be. That's where we're going to use our random number generator. Uh, the app stopped working with the new iOS update, so I had to just go get a new app. So that's why it looks different if you've seen this before. Now I have to hit this little tiny generate button. All right, so we're gonna uh, generate a number 68. Okay, so basically there's 75 champions. If you haven't seen this before, there's 75 champions in the game. And so we're gonna go with champion number 68 is gonna be our first one. All right, so really in Soul, you know, I just, we're just counting them one to 75. So really in Soul 75. So we're gonna count from this way, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, 69, and 68. So 68 is Lux. Okay, so our first champion is gonna be Lux. And Lux is going to be paired with this little generate button. There we go. 61. All right. Well, from Lux, we can go down 67, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Vi. Okay. Lux Vi. That's a nice little pairing right there. We're going to make a good Lux Vi deck. Good morning, Nate Dog. All right. Next up, we have do, 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 57. All right, so we just said Vi was 61. So we just keep on counting down from Vi. So 61, 60, 59, 58, 57 is Swain. Awesome. All right, so so far so good. We've got a good champ so far. Let's see who's Swain is going to be paired with 65. Isn't? All right, so this is, so Swain was 57. Yeah, so that's 61. Two, three, four, five. Okay, no, we didn't. We didn't do that one already. All right, so Darius. So 65 is Darius. So we have Swain plus Darius. Ooh. Okay, so both Noxus. We can go any region. We'll have to really think about it. We can go any other region to pair with those two. Next champion, 17. All right, we're back towards the top. 17. So one, two, three, four. We'll just count down this way. Four. 8, 12, 16. So the very next champion after Callista is going to be Katarina. All right, we need to play Katarina again. All right, who's Katarina going to get paired with? Do, 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 do. 61. Now we've gotten some, some high numbers today. All right, so Katarina was 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. 44, 48, 52, 56, 61 is Vi. Okay, so we already did Vi. So that number sounded familiar. So we're going to do a different number. We don't we don't uh, repeat the champions today. So we still got Katarina. So now Katarina is going to get paired with a new champion. I know Shivana's number 40. We did Shivana last week and everything. I know, I know Shivana's 40. I guess I could just double check and show, but... Uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. Yeah. So Siobhan is 40 for like whenever we have numbers around 40. All right. So 47, Twist of Fate 44, 45, 46, 47 is Zareth. Oh, man. This one's going to be tough. Oh, man. That's what the random champions can do. They can give you some, some difficult ones to put together. All right. So we're going to have Katarina Zareth. Ooh. All right, well, we got to work cut off for us with that deck. That'll still be fun to see what happens. All right, last champion combination, champion number four. Champion four is action with, so action with champion number one, fizz, action fizz. Those are two new champions. I don't think we've done either of those on the random champion day before. All right, so we have some expensive champions combined together, like Lux, Vi, Swain, Darius, you know, five and six mana ones put together. And then we also have a one and a two mana champion put together with Action Fizz. All right, it's random champion day. Time to go build the decks. Uh, for those of y'all watching on YouTube, we'll be right back with uh, Lux, Vi. All right, see you then. And welcome back, everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for Lux Vi. This is our first of our four random champion decks we just went through and uh, figured out our random champion pairings. And they weren't weren't the easiest ones to build. They took us a little while to build them. 
Um, but this one wasn't too bad. So this is going to be Lux and Vi together. We're going to have Control Deck, Demacia, Piltover, and Zon. And I want to have a lot of spells because of Lux, you know, wanting to see the spell mana. So I want to make sure to have a lot of spells. But of course, we want bodies out here too. So I'm going to try Lux with some cards like Secession and Blinding Assault, which are spells, but they're going to be able to give us units for uh, blocking purposes. And basically I wanted to do that also because of Station Archivist. How Station Archivist picks a spell in the top five, and then you create a fleeting copy of it in hand. Well, you for this, you want to be able to play proactive spells with Station Archivist, because Archivist, you don't really want like Prismatic Barrier, and then you don't need to play Prismatic Barrier that round, you know, that kind of stuff. You need to like your proactive spells that you can play, like you play Archivist, and then you know you're playing that spell. So, proact so Archivist getting like Secession could be kind of cool, or Archivist getting Blinding Assault. You know, those could be some some things that could be, could be kind of cool. With Time Trick, that's a good card that's, you know, proactive. Predict, draw a card. So we'll have that in here. That's a good hit off the Archivist. Um, but then we'll also have, like, Thermogenic Beam, Mystic Shot. We can have some removal. So if we don't do anything round one, don't do anything round two, save our spell mana, we should be able to play Archivist on three, and then, like, one of these other things. You know, maybe we Thermogenic Beam for three, or, or you know, Secession, or something like that. I thought that could be kind of cool. So kind of building around Station Archivist there, too. But anyway, uh, you know, we'll get to the top end. We also have two two Remembrance in here. I was going to play three Remembrance, but decided to throw a Bright Steel Formation in, because Bright Steel Formation is just so powerful and just wins games all the time. Then I just think that in a slower deck like this, we should probably have some kind of really powerful effect in a slow deck. So we're going to just play a Bright Steel Formation. Super late game, also Remembrance could be a cool card for Archivist to hit. All right, we got some Aloof Travelers for some extra card draw in there besides the Time Tricks. Egghead Researchers making some big powerful dragons for us as well. And that's the deck. Um, Prismatic Bear is in here to protect both of our champions. Uh, both Lux and Vi are going to want some protection. So we got that. And then lots of removal, Aftershock, Mystic Shot, Thermogenic Beam, Blinding Assault's basically removal. Sharp Sight, Other Protection. All right, that's the deck. Let's get to it. Let's see how it does. Looks Vi. We'll go play five games. All right, we got Darkness Control. This is going to be a tough matchup because they are also a deck that can grind, and they can can grind really well so this is going to be a difficult matchup we're going to take these two these three out aftershock doesn't kill either champion Ugh. you have to kill that thing immediately so I probably should have kept Blinding Assault for that card, but then it still lets the 3-2 strike. That's what I didn't like about it. I would have rather used Mystic Shot or Aftershock, something like that. All right, let's play the Elite Travelers. All right, cool. Got a Minimorph out of their hand. That's good. Minimorph would have been great against both of our champions. Good, got that free three damage in. It's a lot of darkness out there. Let's make some of our own. Some of our own. Kind of have to do it. Oh wow. Well. Really good stress defense. Really hope they don't have miss call. <clears throat> I just may have an answer. Let us take a peek at life beneath the waves. So 
they want to get darkness out of their hand. Probably means like a Senna or a Vagar right here. Or the two mana thing that makes a darkness. Probably, you know, like just one of those things. I'm doing this my way. <laughs> a little time, I'll have a breakthrough. Good. Well, I did say oh, I I to see the world. Alright, I like the time trick because that, that just lets me play a, a burst spell to get this up to 10. Let's take Lux. Oh, let's kill this thing. Or attempt to kill that thing. Alright, so we'll sharp sight there so they don't kill it with the Vile Feast. And there's another mini morph. Alright, so that's their second mini morph. We made them discard one already. They just used one right there. Let's go with another Vi. And then I can play Lux next round with the Barrier, or I just play Lux right now, and then I can play Remembrance. That's six mana to level up Lux. Tough call. Tough call. We'll go. We'll go Lux right now. I like getting some kind of use out of that barrier. We're not getting any use out of that barrier. Good station archivist draw. Good time. Good card to be drawn. Awesome. Thankfully, their darknesses are only doing two damage. That's really important. They haven't had any kind of <clears throat> increased damage with the darkness. The thing about playing Vi is if I play Vi, we don't get to really play anything else either. I think I might, might as well play like one of these nines. One of these nine cost cards. I'm not sure if they're going to have Ruination. I kind of feel like they don't have Ruination if they were just sitting there dealing damage to the Lux like that. Let's play this one. Awesome. See, I told y'all. Bright Steel Formation just wins games. Auto concede. Elise LeBlanc Darius. Alright. Got some... Some kind of attacking deck. Don't know exactly what it's going to be like. We'll keep the Researcher and Thermogenic Beam. Time Trick's a good card to have late in the game. Don't really need to spend mana on it early. This is a hand where I would prefer not to play Researcher on 2. Because I think I want to play the Archivist on 3 and make sure that I have 3 spell mana. To be able to play whatever we need. But if they play Elise right here... Okay, House Spider, so I'm taking attack for two, three, four. I'm taking attack for four. Because if I play Researcher, then I'm not doing anything next round. But, all right, we'll go and do that. Because now I'm just going to be basically... Oh, that's a good card. Because we're not playing Archivist. Okay, well, that actually all worked out. Because nothing can stop Reckless Trifarian, except for a Thermogenic Beam. To the face. Blocking the spider. Less spiders for Elise level up. You dropped something. I dropped everything. Wraithful Rider. Okay, okay. That didn't work out the best for me. I prefer them to have... Like, I wouldn't mind that they have the Wraithful Rider because I can aftershock that. Like, we can trade good mana for that. That would be a good mana trade. So that aloof wasn't as good for us. It's a 
a lot of fearsome. We'll make the obvious blocks. I'll just pass him instead of playing a kind of researcher. I know just um. the place. Thermo is really good with the Archivist. Those work really well together. Taking seven. Why are you slow speed after shock? Oh, actually, that's me taking. Yeah, it's gotta be seven. I don't... That's not a great job. Oh, these all have fearsome. Never mind, so eight. What is this? That was not good. So basically, it's just us hoping that they can't do too direct damage, right? I think we can, we'll probably be able to handle their attackers for the rest of the game. The more we know, the less we fear. But it looks very likely. So I did, I'm not attacking with the 3-3 here, because... I don't know, maybe I should just be attacking with the 3-3. I, I just don't want, like, something to happen, like, where they block with one of these things, it suddenly dies, then they have Fearsome coming in, where it's, it's only my second Fearsome blocker. <laughs> it sounds like I have a bear r right behind me, but that's, that's Harvey, my dog. <laughs> She's rolling around having fun. Alright, this thing attacks for the most. Ruination. Okay. I guess that's something to expect. I guess. Alright, so we know we know the station archivist is gonna hit blinding assault. We're gonna do that. Just lead with that. Whoa. We have five spells on top. So this is... I think this goes from left to right of, like, the cards that are coming up. So we're gonna have Blinding Assault, Blinding Assault, then Time Trick. Like, that, that's the exact order of our five cards. I guess we'll take Mystic Shock. Nothing's more exciting than an unsolved mystery. Okay. 
So the Decimates just end the game. Of course, we can deal with Captain Farron in a couple of different ways, but the Decimates just end the game. GG's. Alright, one on one. That was Lux. Not Lux, it was Elise. It was Elise. Alright, so we're playing against like a Hecarim deck? With a Zier? Hecarim Azir? We can have round three remembrance. Quick hands make quick work. That's a good card. Hmm. Shark chariot deck. Makes sense. Sand soldiers and shark chariots go well together, and is like a zier. Azir with those would go well together. The chains, they never stop. Curse relics. It's been a good start for them. Thank you. Why is there out of mana? If I'm killing Ravenous Butcher, would I rather kill Ravenous Butcher with a Blinding Assault or a Thermogenic Beam? And I think Blinding Assault. It's also kind of nice how we get, get to give them priority so they do something first and we get to react to what they're doing. On the scene. You never know, they could have played something into that Vi. Warden's Prey is so good. Card's underrated. So they should open attack. Or that's also good. I knew I should have blocked Curse Keeper. That's also really good. So remember, they're going to have the two Shark Chariots alongside with them. So even if I kill like a Zir right here... Just save me a lot of damage, but then I'll, st I'll still take 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'll take 14, so I'm at 14. That's not good. So I think my only play is Archivist hit Mystic Shot. All my spells being slow hasn't been great. Well, these things do the same thing. It's more exciting than an unsolved mystery. Take 11. Take 12, right, Grenadier. Take 12. Aggro decks are rough. 
be better to play like other spells first to help level up by. I could sharp sight right there to level up by. But I don't think that's worth it. We're gonna need all this mana, I assume. Uh, only playing slow removal. My saplings. So both Hecarim and Azir have six health, right? This thing has six health. Yeah, so I can't play anything. The thermogenic beam. Gently, gently. <laughs> Yeah, this is rough. Please play, Hecarim. Thank you. You need not follow, but you will witness. So if I thermogenic beam that, we die. If I... Do anything we die? Yeah, I guess we're just dead. Slow speed spells for the loss. This game. We made it. Yay. But our stuff did it. Stay now. Okay, one and two. Shark chariots looking really good against us. Sharks. Those sharks killed me. us. Eh. Alright, so if I Thermogenic Beam Azir, I'm out of mana. We already know they have the Waking Sands in hand. All they have, all they do is just cast the Waking Sands. The Waking Sands bring, brings back the sharks we lose. We, there wasn't any line that we could take where we don't lose. Vladimir Poppy. I like it. Poppy. I like it. Poppy grows the things, and then Vlad, so they have the extra health, so Vladimir can do the one damage to him. I like it. It's a cool combination. So I'm even thinking keeping um, keeping sharp sight to go along with that head researcher just to be something to make a three five blocker Ready cheap spell make a good blocker. Now I can kind of wait on it. We can make a four three blinding assault and maybe take out a couple of things. Six five blinding assault. Alright, gonna take the damage. Because then this is my plan. It was safer just to buff up that researcher and kill the ballista, and maybe I should have just done that. But my plan is to be able to take out both of these things with the valor. That was my plan. Not good use of mana. Well, that's how life goes. Here comes the punchline. So I kind of think they're going to pass priority to me, right here. No, they play Sithra. Yeah, okay. If they pass priority to me, I was just going to end the round. I think, but they did not. Cool. This magic barrier is good. Yeah. Let the light guide you. Good luck. Hello, my darling. I'm absolutely lost. There's the 
one two punch never back down from what you believe okay that'll work out pretty well oh all right that's fine so that saves oh but then that levels up that saves all of them Wow, what a ranger's resolve. Wow. That was a good ranger's resolve. If I've ever seen one. Well, what's their answer to Infinite Mind Splitter? That's a good answer to Infinite Mind Splitter. Oh, man. Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that's lethal. Wow. Man, those are two perfect cards. Ranger's Resolve and then Rally with that. That's... That was perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So obviously playing Lux and then playing Infinite Mind Splitter, like those were the wrong decisions. I should have been, you know, I could have been playing other stuff. Could have been playing multiple cards and removal and all that kind of stuff. Should have been doing that. Wow. So, Bandle City, PNZ with Vi. Probably. Um, I guess we'll just keep. Probably like a Shell Folk deck, you know, like a. Well, then you think they'd be playing Victor. I don't know. Kind of seems like an Ezreal Vi type deck, but without Ezreal. Just Vi. I should play Secession there and attack with Secession. There's no reason to blinding assault to pass with blinding assault. Let me get you that file. So I'm kind of assuming that that's going to be removal that they just grabbed, and so I don't want to play out a unit. I could be wrong, you know, but I think that that's probably like a removal they got for a free spell. Good, Mystic Shot, Thermogenic Beam. That kind of thing. So I don't want to play anything to give them a, to let them play that free card. Yep. Get excited. Okay. Asking about dragons, I just may have an answer. I could be a good dragon. Nothing's more exciting than an unsolved mystery. All right, same kind of thing. If they want to use the removal on Egghead Researcher, be my guest. I'm not going to play a secession out for them to get excited or whatever. It's a kind of... We don't know what was in their hand, of course, but they kind of wasted the two Station Archivists. I would like to draw Station Archivists. Myself. All right, so we know they have a get excited in hand. We know one of these three cards is get excited, unless, yeah, no, it actually has to be. So yeah, one of those three cards is get excited, and probably one of those two. Probably card number three or four. Probably one of those two is get excited. If this is card one, going that way. Three, four.
Obviously, I could use Sharp Sight to save, but then trade with Fallen Feline. It's just, I, I think Sharp Sight's more valuable than that Fallen Feline, so I didn't make that move. Fearsome. Oh, there's Glorious Evolution. Mind Splitter can be good. They basically only have um, Mini Morph to stomp that. Attack for nine. But they're going to be playing lots and lots of cards now with the what minus one cost from the Glorious Evolution. Nice, Adam said. So I played Spooky Mage Seekers the other day and won a game. I think that was luck and Thresh put in a lot of work. I think you played great. <laughs> I think it was all you, not Thresh. I think you did amazing. Look at me, my lovelies. Look at me. Okay. Those are going to be kind of crazy. So that means, like, get excited in their hand is going to be four get excited. So, like, one get excited is going to do 12 damage to my Nexus. Or, like, 12 damage to something. Like, one get excited kills this Bright Steel Formation now, right? Because they... Yeah, because they have basically have three... Because they have Glorious Evolution, so everything's a copy. Two Get Excited's kill me. We So therefore, we, we're probably losing this game. We know they have one. All they have to do is have another or a Mystic Shot. So that they have... Ooh, I don't know about that. So I'm just one one damage short even with an open attack. Okay. So they have another Mystic Shot or get excited, it looks like. So we finished one and four. What's the motive? It doesn't add up. Look, look, look. I see you. Something to reflect. Yeah, they even had both. So that you can only go nine wide, as you saw there. Like nine is like actually the max. That should have been twelve wide. <laughs> you know, like if they had room, they they would have dealt another nine damage than what it showed with all that. But it kept them from going more than that. They only had to play two. They they played three cards. They only need to play two to kill me. Yeah, it's kind of living the dream. So Glorious Evolution on 7, and then Mirror Mage on 8, another Mirror Mage on 9, and then you just need a Get Excited and a Mystic Shot to kill him. That's kind of the dream there. <laughs> yeah, Mirror Mage making two more Mirror Mages. That's the dream. All right, so we ran into some really hot opponents, right? Like that that's they were you know our opponents were living their dream right they lived their dream the vladimir deck with a perfect rangers resolve perfect rally for the last card they lived their dream like just you know kind of wanted some of those games but i um i appreciate what our opponents were doing in those games and so i'm, I'm glad that those are the kind of decks that we're playing against and um you know i i'm glad i'm glad for them i'm happy for our opponents but um our deck 
didn't look that bad. It really didn't. It's just, you know, our, there's when there's only two people playing against each other, one person has to win and one person has to lose. And so if they have, you know, like the best thing their deck can be doing and exactly what they want their deck to be doing and they win the game, that doesn't necessarily mean that the person who lost the game, their deck is terrible. You know, it's just it wasn't quite as good as our opponent's. And that's just kind of what happened in a lot of those games is our deck just wasn't quite as good as our opponents or they had the right cards at the right time. So um, I think this deck could, I think we could run it back and go three and two or four and one pretty easily. But in this small five game sample, we only won one of them. All right, but that's going to be it for Lux Vi. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, Hit that like button over there and feel free to leave those comments and let me know what you think of this build for, for Lux Vi. If you have any other ideas for the deck, feel free to put them in um, in the chat. I'll be you know happy to hear about any other ideas, but that's going to be it for this one. So uh, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.